The vector field's finite element electromagnetic simulation software can be used to optimize designs using the new powerful optimizer within the Opera software framework. This is a demonstration of how the optimizer can be used to optimize the design of a quadrupole magnet. To begin with, we will introduce and simulate a quadrupole magnet and then examine aspects of its finite element solution within the Opera software. Once we have done this, we will then move on to the optimization process and display the results. Let's construct a quadrupole magnet within the Opera 12 3D modeler. First, we form an iron cylinder to form the main ring of the quadrupole magnet. then a block to form the main pull tip, a further cylinder to form the curved surface at the end of the pull, select the block then the cylinder and remove the excess to form a curved surface pull. Selecting the edges of the pull we can then blend them to form an extra curved surface select the pole and copy and duplicate to form the four pull tips. Now that we have the main structure constructed, what exactly is a quadrupole magnet? Quadrupole magnets are used to control beams of charged subatomic particles which pass through the air region inside the four pull tips. It is the shape of the magnetic field in this region which causes the desired effects on the charged particles and it is the shape of the pull tips which governs the shape of the magnetic field in the central region. Both the length of the pull tip and the blend radius are the important criteria. We shall see later how the length of the pull and the blend radius are used during the optimization process. But for now however, let's continue constructing the quadrupole magnet. Selecting the iron and the poles allows us to set the size of the finite element mesh required on this region. Conducting coils are now added to produce the magnetic field inside the iron. To accurately reproduce the magnetic fields in the center of the magnet, a cylinder needs to be added. If we now consider the symmetry of this quadrupole magnet, it can be realised that boundary conditions can be applied on the x, y, z, x and z, y planes to produce reflections so that only one-eighth of the model needs to be solved within the finite element mesh. The finite element method also requires that a mesh be included outside of the iron regions to allow the magnetic field to drop to zero at larger distances. These symmetry boundary conditions in the external finite element air region are easily created within the Opera 3D modeler. Here we've chosen to use a cylinder and tangential magnetic boundary conditions on each of the three planes. Now what has just happened here? The modeler has produced a large air region around the outside of the iron and left only one eighth of the iron remaining due to the symmetry conditions. The finite element mesh can now be produced upon this model. Here we see that the finest mesh is now produced on s inside the air cylinder at the centre of the magnet and that it is also relatively fine inside the iron and then quickly increases in size as it moves away from the iron. Tosca, which is Vector Field's magnetostatic finite element solver, will be able to solve 
for the magnetic field at every node of this mesh. Once the finite element mesh database has been produced, the solution job can be submitted as a batch process using the Opera Manager. To solve a database using the Opera Manager, simply select the file and drop it into the batch processor and then click Run. Once the process has finished running, we can then analyse the results in the Opera 3D post processor. We can now see the finite element solution of the quadrupole magnet system inside the Opera 3D post processor. But what exactly is it that we can see here? Well, the colours represent the magnetic field strength on the surface of the iron, with pink showing the strongest field and blue being the weakest. This magnetic field distribution is due to the winding coils which are wrapped around the poles. We can also display the vectors to show which direction the magnetic field is flowing through the iron. We see that it flows through the pole, round the return and back through the other pole, which implies that it also flows through the air region to form a complete circle. We can also display a disk in the air region to show the distribution of the field. Here you can see the distribution of the magnetic field vectors in the circular air region. We see that they rotate as you move around in a circle. In fact, they have a cos 2 theta distribution. This is called a second order Fourier harmonic. There are however other components in this distribution as well. What we wish to do during the optimization process is maximize the cos 2 theta of the distribution and minimize any other components. We can do this by fitting a Fourier series on a circle in the center of this air region. Here we see the results of the fit to the Fourier series for the B field in this A region. We see that most of the terms, sine terms and cosine terms, are essentially zero, except for the second order cosine term. To optimize the design of the quadrupole magnet, we wish to maximize this value and determine everything else to be zero. These Fourier terms provide a way to quantify the shape of the magnetic field in the air region, which, as described earlier during the model's construction, is governed by the length of the pole and the blend radius on its edge. The optimization process will vary both of these design variables and test the resulting field shape criteria. It will then be able to choose better design variables in an attempt to satisfy the field shape objectives. The optimization process is controlled via the Opera Manager. The optimization of the quadrupole model is started by selecting the unsolved database file produced earlier. Inside the optimizer, we see the two design variables for the length of the iron pole, or in this case the offset from the original position and the blend radius on the edge of the pole. Limits to constrain these design variables can be added to control the optimizer. For the quadrupole magnet model, there is only one objective function, which, as discussed earlier, is the second order Fourier term. Here we have chosen to maximize the second order Fourier term by choosing a specific target value of 0.5 and requesting that the optimizer seek solutions such that the deviation of the second order term is zero. It is of course possible to have multiple objectives if required, however for this example we only have one. The remaining variables are set as constraints. 
the actual value of the Fourier terms is not actually important, only that they be small compared to the second order term. This is why they are set as constraints and not objectives. The optimizer will now seek solutions which satisfy these constraints. There are also other optimization settings, such as the length of time that the optimizer can run for and the maximum number of iterations. Selecting these settings starts the optimization process. A large number of batch jobs are submitted, each with a different pair of design variables. This is so that the optimizer can get a good feel for how the objectives and constraints depend upon the inputted design variables. Once all of these models have been solved, the optimizer then runs individual jobs to fine tune its search for the best solution. The results of the optimization can be displayed. Here we see that there has been a great many iterations towards the solution. They are ranked according to how close the harmonic error is from zero, which is the objective. We also see that the constraints have all been satisfied. However, if we slide down to lower ranking solutions, we will notice that this is not always the case. Graphical displays can be shown. Here we see a distribution of the normalized objective function as it approaches zero as a function of the iteration number. The best solution is shown here. The constraints can also be monitored as a function of iteration. Here we see that constraint one was satisfied for every iteration since it has a value lower than 0 0.001. This is not the case for the second constraint however, with some iterations being above the value. The case for the third constraint is somewhat similar. We can also examine the location of the solution within the design variable space. Here, B represents the blend radius on the pole tips and D represents the offset of the pole from its original position. The sparse scattering of possible solutions across this space is due to the large number of jobs that were submitted at the beginning of the optimization process so that the optimizer can work out how the objectives relate to the design variables. It then begins to home in on the correct solution within this space. The solution can be seen here. Let's now examine this optimized solution within the Opera 3D post-processor. Here we see the pull tip of the original input to the optimization process, where the colours represent the magnetic field strength on the surface of the iron. Watch carefully as the length and the blend radius change. This is the optimised solution. The best way to quantify the optimised results are to examine the cosine terms of the Fourier series. We can see here that the second order term is now very close to the desired value of 0.5 and that sixth order harmonic terms much smaller than were originally due to the constraints imposed on the optimization process. This concludes the optimization example of a quadrupole magnet within Vector Fields Opera 3D Finite Element Simulation software clearly demonstrating the power that the optimizer can bring to your electromagnetic designs.